All right, normally in training camp diaries, we take you on a whistle stop tour around everything to happen at the Novocare complex. But there are two things stopping me from doing that today. The first one is that practice took place inside the bubble, not like a NBA bubble, but the Novocare bubble due to rain and only two reporters were allowed inside. So observations were coincidentally quite similar between the two reporters and there wasn't a lot that happened. A couple of big Adrian Killings played. But the big thing I wanted to talk about today related to Jay and Peters because he has apparently came out according to a report by the Philly Voice saying that if he's moving to left tackle, if he's going to be the guy to start the season on the left to replace Andre Dillon, he wants a new contract. And I feel very strongly about this in one side of the fence and I want to explain my feelings and hopefully have a discussion with you guys. So let's get into it and I'll tell you what, I'll do you a favour, we won't even play the intro music. But I will also guys, if you do enjoy this content, do hit that subscribe button and make sure you hit the bell to turn notifications on. If you want to leave your opinions down below, I'd very much love to hear them because I understand that JP himself was a polarising player at the start of the offseason when the Eagles were debating whether they should or shouldn't let him go and that is where I want to start today's video because at this point Jason Peters is like an ex-girlfriend okay you've broken up you've both moved on one of you is now in a stable relationship the other has teetered and, and dated a couple of times but still can't quite find the right fit and at a random party the two of you have met up decided the spark's still there and wanted to kick the tires but eradicate all the mistakes from before now that's fine but you don't let your ex-girlfriend come in and redecorate your house within a week because she doesn't like what you've done to the place. The Eagles cut ties with Jason Peters. They moved on. They got rid of him. It was done. That was Howie Roseman saying that he's not going to be loyal to players that maybe he shouldn't be as loyal to. That he has to put the best interests of the team first. Now, bringing him back at right guard, was that the best interest of the team? It's debatable, in my opinion, that was the way to kind of shiftily bring him in without unsettling the Andre Dillard apple cart, knowing that in a worst case scenario, which we are already in before we even started the season, you've got a player there that can play left tackle if absolutely needed. He is now needed, and now Jason Peters is kicking off, saying if I'm playing there, I want a new deal. Now, for context, that $3 million that he's averaging in his salary right now, make him the 30th highest paid left tackle in the league, which... I think we can all agree he's worth a bit more than that, and I can see why he personally would be fighting for a new deal. My problem is that JP's always been like that. I mean, how shocking was it when he actually took a pay cut the first time round a couple of years ago? The day he actually decided to take a pay cut and help the team, it was like a revelation. It was mind-blowing. And now JP, having been in the building for about a month, is back to his old tricks, and we know he's got significant pull in the locker room. We know he's very close with Jeffrey Lurie. We know he's got the almost political power there, where Stefan Wisniewski was forced out of the picture when the entire offensive line was struggling a couple of years ago. He then went out the door, went to Kansas City, won himself a Super Bowl. I couldn't be happier for him, but I understand that JP does have a monumental pull. The other thing he's got going for him right now is that he can go, all right, well, fine, don't pay me and ride with the other guys, which is what Doug Peterson seems to be wanting to do. We've seen today Matt Pryor line up at left tackle. We know that Jack Driscoll will be there. I think Prince Tiger Ranigo, from everything I've heard, is a little further behind in his development. And then there's Jordan Mailata, who is the primary backup behind Andre Dillard. That's fine. My problem with that is I don't think Mailata is ready to go head-to-head -head with Chase Young in Week 1. If you're looking at anyone on the Eagles roster ready for Chase Young in Week 1, it is Jason Peters. And JP can sit there and say, look, fine, don't give me an extension. Go and sign a backup with a week to go into the regular season. See how you get on. See how you get on by bringing in someone that hasn't had a team all offseason, may not be in shape, is going to come in, get worked by guys like Josh Sweat and Joe Osterman, and get absolutely torched in week one for the price of a simple contract you could just give to me as a boost. Now, I do fully get that from Peters, and I understand why I'd want to, doesn't mean I like it, and it doesn't mean I have to like it. I think it is a very selfish move. I understand he is at the tail end of his career. He's been in the city for 10 years. He didn't have to come back. He had better offers on the table, but now he's, he's almost manipulating that in his favor. And for me, I don't like it. You know, you play for the club on the front, not the name on the back. And I really don't think that if you've signed a contract preemptively, you should then renegotiate it when suddenly the terms of your job change. Jason Peters, as someone that has played left tackle for 10 years, 
has to have known, has to have known that he would have been asked to play left tackle in an emergency spot because my Lato isn't ready to go, Driscoll probably isn't, and I don't think you're going to start Matt Pryor at left tackle. He knew if he wanted to leverage that in negotiations, he absolutely should have. Doing it two months down the line when you've signed a deal and have now been thrown back into the deep end, it's too little too late. It's like when Dillard was thrown to the wolves at right tackle against Seattle, Peters comes out a week later and goes, I'd have done that, actually. I'd have started there. I'd have taken the weight off his shoulders. Bit late, mate. You're, you're jumping after the horse has bolted. I really don't like that mentality. I don't think the Eagles should pay him. I actually call his bluff and go, fine, all right? We'll work Driscoll there. Let's not forget Vitae, a former fifth-round pick who played 50 games for the Eagles as a backup tackle. We know Jeff Stoutland can groom guys up and get them help. You've got Sam Arlo and Kelsey on that left side. You can get him help. You've got tight ends in Goddard and Ertz who can act as nub tight ends either side of the formation. You can get him help. I don't think the Eagles need to go and pay Jason Peters a stupid amount of money when they know their salary cap next picture is a little bit murky to say the very least and I totally get they want to carry as much of that revenue over as possible. If you want to sign a backup tackle, someone that has been maybe cut recently by another team, someone that is floating on the free agent market or trade for one, I get it. But don't pay Jason Peters. You don't let someone, again, walk back into your house and tell you they don't like the way you've decorated. You had your opportunity the first time round. You pissed it away. That's on you. You had a chance to negotiate a contract. You couldn't get it done. It's a bit selfish. It puts the team in a bad situation. It puts a unanimous sense of pressure on guys like Driscoll, on guys like Mylanta, and guys like Prince Tegavanago, it's not right. It's not what a leader would do, and I don't agree with it. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching today's video, guys. If you enjoyed it. If you liked it, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, you can get your daily dose of Philadelphia sports coverage from myself and all of our writers at phillysportsnetwork.com. We'll be back for Sunday Funday tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. We'll see you very soon.